So we've looked at the maxillary central incisor, the maxillary lateral incisor, the mandibular central incisor, the mandibular lateral incisor, and the maxillary canine. In the sixth and final video of our anterior tooth dental anatomy marathon, we're going to be looking at the mandibular canine. Hi, I'm Dr. Clara. I'm a practicing dentist and your new dental study coach. I'm taking mountains of textbooks and information and turning them into short, easily digestible videos to make your studying a little bit easier. Speaking of studying, are you currently studying for a tooth identification test? Do you have a strategy yet? Well, I have a five-step tooth identification cheat sheet that just might help. Go in the description below and grab it. There are two mandibular canines, the right and the left, and those are numbered 27 and 22 using the universal numbering system. The mandibular canine is the next type of canine we're going to be going over. Canines, unlike incisors, have cusps instead of incisal ridges. There are four canines in total, making them the cornerstones of the mouth. Canines are often called cuspids because they have that single cusp to them. You might also hear patients call them their fang teeth or vampire teeth. The mandibular canine is the third tooth from the midline in the mandibular arch, distal to the mandibular lateral incisor. The mandibular canine is very similar to the maxillary canine, but the features are a little bit less prominent. The mandibular canine is the longest tooth in the mandibular arch, while the maxillary canine is the longest tooth of all of the teeth. The function of the mandibular canine is to cut, pierce, and tear food, support the lips, support the muscles of the face, help with aesthetics, and to protect the posterior teeth through canine guidance. The mandibular canine erupts at ages 9 to 10 years old, and the root completes 3 years later at 13 years old. The initial sign of calcification is at 4 to 5 months. Let's look at the mandibular canine from the facial. Like other anterior teeth, the shape of the crown is a trapezoid, with the larger base at the incisal and the smaller base at the cervix. So the tooth is tapering from the incisal to cervix. With the mandibular canine having a cusp tip with cusp slopes instead of an incisal ridge, the shape could be considered to be a pentagon shape as well. The crown of the mandibular canine is wider than the mandibular incisors, but narrower than the maxillary canine. The crown of the mandibular canine is also taller or equal to the maxillary canine. The cusp tip of the mandibular canine is less sharp and more obtuse than the maxillary canine. To either side are cusp slopes, also called cusp ridges. The mesial cusp slope is shorter than the distal cusp slope. And the mesial cusp slope is nearing horizontal, while the distal cusp slope is quite sharp. The cusp tip is centered over the root of the tooth. The mesial outline is quite flat and straight. The mesial outline of the crown is in line with the mesial outline of the root. So there's just a very straight line going from the crown through the root. The mesial contact or height of contour is in the incisal one third. The distal outline is more curved than the mesial outline and the distal contact is more cervical than the mesial being located in the middle one third. Like the maxillary canine, the mandibular canine has a labial ridge, but it's not as pronounced as the maxillary canine. To either side of the labial ridge are depressions that divide the three facial developmental lobes. The root of the mandibular canine is usually shorter than the maxillary canine, and it's the second longest root in the mouth. The root of the mandibular canine is usually straight, but if it curves, it's gonna to curve to the mesial. Unlike all the other anterior teeth we've looked at, where if they're gonna curve, they're curving towards the distal more often. Now let's flip this tooth over and look at it from the lingual. From the lingual, the mandibular canine has the same outline as it did from the facial, just seems reversed. The lingual surface of the mandibular canine has the same features as the maxillary canine, but not as pronounced. The ridges are gonna be flatter, and the fossa are gonna be more shallow leaving the lingual surface more smooth than the maxillary canine. There's gonna be a mesial marginal ridge along the mesial, a distal marginal ridge along the distal, and then a third ridge on this lingual surface that runs between the marginal ridges, and that's the lingual ridge. 
which runs from the cuff's tip to the cingulum. On either side of the lingual ridge is a fossa, to the mesial, a mesial lingual fossa, and to the distal, a distal lingual fossa. Like all anterior teeth, the mandibular canine has a cingulum. It's not as prominent as the maxillary canine. The cingulum of the mandibular canine is displaced to the distal. The root and crown of the mandibular canine are going to taper towards the lingual. So the mesial distal dimensions of the facial are wider than the mesial distal dimensions of the lingual. Now let's look at the mesial and distal of this tooth. Let's look at the mandibular canine from the proximal view. This is the mesial, this is the distal. The shape of the crown from this view is triangular or wedge shaped with the base at the cervix and the point at the cusp. The facial outline is convex. The outline is continuous with the root. It's C-shaped from the cusp tip all the way to the apex. The height of contour is at the cervical one-third. The cervical prominence or height of contour is not as pronounced as the maxillary canine was. The lingual outline is S-shaped, convex over the cingulum and concave to the cusp tip. The height of contour is that cingulum at the cervical one-third, and that cingulum is not as pronounced as the maxillary canine cingulum was. The cervical line, or CEJ, where the crown meets the root, curves towards the incisal, towards that cusp tip. The mesial curvature is larger than the distal curvature. The cusp tip of the mandibular canine is in line with the mid-root axis or slightly lingual to it. The root of the mandibular canine is thicker facial lingually than it is mesial distally, and there's shallow depressions on the mesial and distal, with the distal being more pronounced. Let's look at the mandibular canine from the incisal view. The outline of the mandibular canine is similar with the same landmarks as the maxillary canine, but everything is less extreme. The outline is more oval, but there's still four apexes or points to that. To the facial is the cervical prominence of the facial or labial ridge. To the distal is the distal bulge. To the lingual is the cingulum, which is displaced to the distal. And to the mesial is the mesial convexity or contact. The mesial marginal ridge and distal marginal ridge taper to the cingulum from the contacts. The mandibular canine is much wider facial lingually compared to mesial distally. If you section the tooth facial lingually, there's going to be more bulk to the distal half of the crown. The cusp tip is centered over the root, but it is mesial on the crown due to that distal having more bulk to it. The cusp tip is going to be centered facial lingually or slightly lingual to the center of the tooth. The mandibular canine has one root and one or two canals. Those canals will be positioned one towards the lingual and one towards the facial. If you take a cross section of that root, you will see that it is longer facial lingually than it is mesial distally. And you'll see that there are depressions on the mesial and distal of that root cross section, which correlates with the depressions we talked about on the root when we were looking at the mesial and distal surfaces of the tooth. So we've been talking about the typical features of a typical mandibular canine, but not all the mandibular canines are going to be the same. There's going to be some variation. A common variation that you should know is that a mandibular canine might have a bifurcated root. And when it has a bifurcated root, it's going to have two canals with two roots, one facial, one lingual. And each of these roots will have its own canal. Attention dental students. This variation of the mandibular canine having a bifurcated root or two roots is a common test question. The mandibular canine is the anterior tooth most likely to have a bifurcated root or two roots. And those two roots will be oriented with one to the facial and one to the lingual. Which anterior tooth is most likely to exhibit a bifurcated root? The mandibular canine. Which of the following teeth is most likely to have two roots? Now this was a trick question. The answer is not the mandibular canine. If you have studied more than just the anterior teeth, you'll know that the mandibular first molar has two roots, while the mandibular canine has two roots in this variation. So not always. So the tooth, not anterior tooth, 
most likely to have two roots is the mandibular first molar. Attention dental students. Common test questions is to compare and contrast teeth. In this case, the maxillary canine and the mandibular canine. The following will be a chart highlighting some key differences between the maxillary canine and the mandibular canine. The maxillary canine has more pronounced anatomy compared to the mandibular canine, which tends to be smoother. The ridges of the maxillary canine are more developed, the fossa are deeper, and the cingulum is more prominent. While the mandibular canine ridges and cingulum are less developed and the fossa are quite shallow. The distal bulge of the maxillary canine is very prominent, while the distal bulge of the mandibular canine is less prominent. The facial prominence of the maxillary canine is also more pronounced than a mandibular canine, which leads to the maxillary canine having a wider facial lingual dimension. The cusp tip of the maxillary canine is sharper and more acute, compared to the mandibular canine's cusp, which is more blunt and more obtuse. Also, the mesial cusp ridge of the mandibular canine is nearing horizontal. The cusp tip of the maxillary canine is labial or facial to the long axis of the tooth, while the cusp tip of the mandibular canine is lingual or centered to the long axis of the tooth. The cingulum of the maxillary canine is centered while the cingulum of the mandibular canine is displaced to the distal. The maxillary canine will have one root and one canal consistently, while the mandibular canine has a variation where it can have two roots, and if it had one root, it would still possibly have one or two canals. Some features that the mandibular canine has that the maxillary canine does not is a mesial outline of the crown being continuous with the root as well as the facial outline of the crown being continuous with the root, from the cusp tip to the apex of the root, making a C-shape. Which of the following canines is properly matched with their trait? Let's go through these together. The maxillary canine commonly has two roots. False. It's the mandibular canine that might have two roots and be bifurcated, so that's not the correct answer. B. The maxillary canine has a mesial cusp ridge close to horizontal. Nope, wrong tooth. It's the mandibular canine that will have a mesial cusp ridge close to horizontal, so B is not the answer. C. The mandibular canine has the sharper, more acute cusp tip. That's not correct. The maxillary canine has the sharper, more acute cusp tip compared to the mandibular canine whose cusp tip is more blunt and more obtuse. C is not the correct answer. The maxillary canine has a cingulum that is centered. Correct. The correct answer is D. The maxillary canine has a cingulum that is centered, while it would be the mandibular canine that has a cingulum displaced to the distal. Which of the following traits is seen in both maxillary and mandibular canines? Let's go through these answers together. A, a facial outline that is a continuous arc from cusp tip to root apex. That's just true for the mandibular canine, so not the correct answer. B, a mesial cusp bridge that is shorter than the distal cusp bridge. That's a trait that both the maxillary and mandibular canine share, so B is the correct answer. Let's look at the rest of the answers anyways. C, a concavity cervical to a very prominent distal bulge. That's a trait of the maxillary canine. The maxillary canine has a very prominent distal bulge with a concavity cervical to it, while the mandibular canine's distal contour is not as prominent. D, a cusp tip lingual to the root axis line. That's just the mandibular canine. The maxillary canine would have a cusp tip labial to the root axis line. The correct answer is B. And this is our final day of our anterior tooth dental anatomy marathon. It's been a blast. Happy studying. Bye.